mate. I don't want to see you near the Coopers until further notice. We're a family pub with standards, professional standards. Have I made myself clear? Perfectly. Good. You have been warned. Afternoon. Afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Byron. Mr. John Winston Byron. Who wants to know? I'm Linda Fawcett, Senior Community Liaison, Officer for Kennet and Avon. This is my colleague, Luke Parsons. Afternoon. I see you found our paperwork. I shall assume it was received and that you read and digest the content. Mr. Byron, on the 12th of March, you were granted with an F1993 notice. After refusing to reply to or acknowledge receipt of six subsequent summons, this morning we were granted an optional grace period of eight hours. You now have just over two hours to vacate. Tell me, Mrs. Forsett, have we... Have we met before? Oh, Mr. Byron, you know full well who I am. We've oh, met many times. Oh, I knew it. I never forget face me. <laughs> we met three years ago when I gave dispute against you with my colleague Pat Pickles. Pat Pickles, 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 <laughs> Pickles, Pickles, Pickles. Mm. You trespassed on his private property. Oh, sorry, not ringing any bells. You stripped him, gagged him, and locked him up in his shed. Ah, Pat Pickles, all right, short, shifty fat bastard, bald. Mr. Pickles has high blood pressure, sir. He was in there without food or water for a week. Oi, right, right, Pat Pickles should thank me. You see, I called his GP, and she reckons I lowered his blood pressure. He had no access to his medicine. He could have died. She reckons I put a good ten years on Pat Pickles. Then six years ago? You attacked my colleague, Peter Hans. Ooh, right. During the Salisbury Festival in the Salisbury Arts Centre, in the interval of Jack and the Beanstalk. All right, all right, first of all, that was by far the worst pantomime I've ever been to. And two, what were you doing at the Christmas pantomime with Mr. Hans, a married man who, who, who clearly ain't your husband? For your information, Peter and I just won first joint prize in the office sweepstake. Right, see, from where I was sat, Mr. Hans is aptly named. He's behind you! <laughs> I can delete that. Oh. This man has been on his past and talent since September 1982. A period of 27 years into which no grand rates or rates oh. have been paid to Kenneth and Avon. Come on, Linda, this is me you're this talking This land to. belongs to Kenneth and Avon. Says who? The law, Mr Byron, the English law. All oh, right, read me this. Turn around. What does that say? Hmm? Read it. What does it say? Hmm? It says, fuck the new estate. Oh, he loves it when you talk dirty to me. Mr Linda. Byron, your disagreement is not with the new estate. There are 320 residents on the new estate, and we have uh, 280 names recorded here. What are you talking about? 80% of the population of Flintock took times out of their busy days to protest against you. I am showing the recipient a legally recognised petition of local complaints concerning the legal encampment and activities hereabouts. Right, read me those names then. <laughs> Francis Morgan Donald. Right, Don and Fran Morgan. Well, Fran and Don Morgan, they think I did them out of this pain two years back in Or. Olive Phillips, Jessica Harding, Sydney Harding, Gerald Kerr. Right, Darrell, he still owes me a lawnmower from bloody 1989. Percy Loyal, Kate Wynn. Right, Percy, Percy is the manager of the Moon Rangers. We've had a few disagreements for years, but it's all cleared up now. So go on. Uh, Gordon Baker, Janet Baker, Roland Coslin. Hannah Wilkes, Dave Stroyer, Perry Stroyer, Jack Stroyer, Marvis Lennox, Phil Lennox, Bell Tyrrell, Leslie Tyrrell, Harry Spurling, Meg Spurling. Harry and Meg Spurling, right, right, well, see, they had this dog, right, and the dog, it bites a Lee Purvis. He's never heard of them. Jack Tratner. Jack Tratner's a cunt. Nick Harper, Paul Austin. Never heard of them. Mark Tommy, Mary Tommy, Harry Fields, Gladys Fields, Jason Kettle. Lee Kettle, Marcus Kettle, Paul Kettle, okay, Laura stop. Butcher, Gary Ford. Oh, stop it, that's enough! Right, stop! 
Look at the map. Look at the map. This is Roaster's Wood. I'm Roaster Byron and I'm Roaster. You are a drug dealer, Mr. Byron. You deal drugs to miners. We have sworn statements. South Wiltshire Police have compiled a dossier evidence that they will use in case of any further resistance. Right now, there is a bulldozer parked on Uphaven Road. Come tomorrow, it will be joined by two dozen constables. Mr. Byron, come tomorrow, 9am, if you do not comply to this order, they will be here. They will seize your vehicle and belongings, your camp will be raised, and you will be arrested. It's over, Mr. Byron. We have you. How many houses are you building anyway? Hmm? Who gets the contracts? Who gets the kickbacks? <coughs> You're right. Oh, you are. You're right. Kids, they do come here. And half of them are safer here than they are at home. You got nowhere else to go, you come here. The door's open, you don't like it, you stay away. I mean, what the fuck do you think an English forest is for anyway? Here ye, here ye. This is Rooster Byron telling all you Kennet and Avon South Wiltshire bandits and Salisbury white wigs. Bang your gavels, issue your warrants, hit your leaflets and your beatings and your bursar and back up your old poxy sham face plot and get or there'll be blood in the chop before we're way through. This is your last and final warning. Hear ye, hear ye. Oh, that really hurt. Oh. Oh.